Hi Happy Crafters, how are you all? Thank you for joining me yet again in my live studio. I hope you're sat at home comfy and I hope you've got a cup of tea in hand ready to see what's going to go on in the studio today. Um, some of the products I'm going to use you've probably already got at home so you'll be able to get the inspiration and put it straight to work. If you haven't got what I'm going to use in the studio that's fine also. You can go and grab something alternative in your kit that might work with this specific technique. But if you do what like what we're using live today you can always catch it on our website. All you need to do is pop in FBL into our search engine and there you will find all the products that are available today in the live studio. So for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Tony Darrick and I am a guest presenter over on the lovely channel Create and Craft and have been for about five years now. It's amazing. So I like to paint, colour, um, and learn. I'm like a sponge and anything I learn I can't wait to get in the studio and show you guys at home so you can do the same maybe put your spin on it um, you know it's just about learning and enjoying it you know it's not a crime to do something wrong sometimes those criminal cards turn out to be the best cards so if you're watching on Facebook please give me the thumbs up that would be appreciated and please share with all your friends the more people that watch the better and if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. We are encroaching thousands and thousands of subscribers and every new subscriber I get it encourages me to do more because I know people are liking what they're seeing. I know people are learning and I love anything to do with learning. So if you are popping a comment below, just let me know where you're watching from also. It'd be nice to see where you're all watching from. And at the end of the studio, I will post a picture of my cards I've made and then later on in the week, I will pick a lucky winner who has either commented on the makes to receive the lovely studio cards. So let's crack straight on then. So I've got two demonstrations today and I'm going to be using some of our earlier ones. So these two I'm going to be using and these two, we launched these about a year ago on Create and Craft. And they, again, they have been one of our best sellers. So I'll just take this one out of the packet for you. I still can just pop it on this white card. There we go. And our Christmas box that we just launched a couple of days ago, um, we put together for the Christmas box. This is the second Christmas box. So if you missed out on the first, this is in the second Christmas box. So it's a great gift for Sunday. These two products are nearly the price of the Christmas box and you get over 120 pounds within there. So this is the demonstration. I'm gonna show you how to use these and probably get the most out of them. So we have the stamp and we have the coordinating die. So let's go ahead. We're gonna create quite a small card today. So I have two pieces of black card stock here. <coughs> excuse me I have got a nasty cough again I think it must be this time of year and I have a coordinating envelope and we're going to make a coordinating card you know how much I love to decorate my cards and envelopes so what I'm going to do is within this collection you get like a, a rose and then you get a rose with three heads in and one with one in and we're going to create a little bit of an aperture on our envelope as well so I'm just going to get the envelope and I'm just going to place <coughs> the envelope in the bottom right hand side of our Eureka and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm just going to pop a piece of card in and get in exactly the same position on my next piece. So I have an anti-static bag here and I'm just going to anti-static the area where we're going to be doing a little bit of heat embossing. Now the reason we do this is it gets rid of any moisture on the card and then you don't get the horrible fuzzy mess where the embossing powder sticks everywhere but the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top one and I'm just going to pop it at the top of my envelope like so. I'm just move that up slightly. And then the thin one I'm going to put along the bottom. Now let's just swap that one out a little bit because that has got a bit of a point on there so you wouldn't be able to get the dr address. Yeah, let's do, it. let's do it that way. And then we'll move this one further down. So you'll still be able to get the recipient's address within there. So I'll just pick this up and I'm just going to use a sticky ink pad and we're going to use some gold embossing on this one so it'll look quite ornate, should we say. So lots of light taps all over your stamp and 
we'll stamp it out, see how we go. And because it's black and I can't really see if it has worked, I am just going to do it again for the second time just to be safe. Uh, because we've got the Eureka, we have the facility to do that. If you haven't got a Eureka, you may have the other ones that are available. There's a fabulous one on um, Create and Craft at the moment. We are Memory Keepers platform. So use what you've got at home, you know. They all do the same thing. Oh, I can see that a little better now, so that's cool. So all I'm just going to do is I'm just going to grab some cardstock. Just pop this within here. I'm just going to give my embossing powder a shake because it's a sparkly one is this one. Just look how beautiful that is. And then we'll just swap it out and do this one. Can you see that? That is beautiful. I'm just going to set that aside and I will heat set it in a second. What I'm going to do whilst my stamp is in position, I'll just pop this back into the jar. Whilst my stamp is still in the same position, I'm just going to go and do the same for our card front. So I'm just going to get some black card, pop it back in the same place into the Eureka. And again, I'm just going to use my anti-static bag. I'm just going to see if the stamps actually sit on the black card. The top one doesn't, so what we'll do is we'll move them. These ones are going to be die cut, you see, so these are going to be quite beautiful. So same concept as the envelope, <coughs> excuse me. So glue ink pad. So if you have got any questions or anything over uh, anything we've done today, um, previous, previous studios, is there something that's bugging you you can't quite get? If obviously I don't know the answer, I can always try and find out for you. You know, <coughs> we're all here to help each other. So again, I'm just going to do that one again, just to make sure. move the magnet out of the way <coughs> and again I'm just going to repeat the process with <coughs> excuse me the gold embossing powder so I'm not going to throw lots at it because obviously it will just stick randomly anyway so there's one and I'll just turn it over So again, you can see how beautiful that is. It will even be more sparklier once it's been heated and set. So we'll just set this aside, this Eureka, and we will bring in our envelope and our card, and we'll get some get this set with our heat tool. So, quick tip for you: if you are heat embossing, always ensure your gun's good and hot. Um, you get less warp in your card. Um, if there's less time spent on the card, should we say. So get your gun hot and you will get less warp in your card. <coughs> so I always get mine as hot as I possibly can, time permitting. So, <coughs> but if you do get a lot of warp in your cards, don't worry about it. Just place it in the middle of a book or underneath something and it will soon flatten out. It's not a great shape. So I'm happy that's hot enough. And I'll just go straight in and as soon as the powder begins to change, I'll move my gun. That's one side done, yeah. Let's make sure that's done. And turn it around.
I'll just do the other one. And you can see how beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous is this one. It's so delicate. Less is more in my opinion on this one. It's a beautiful stamp set and then the beautiful envelope as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to die cut these two elements with our coordinating die. So, so I'll just get them out of the set. So you have your large... Is this the right die for this one? I hope so. And then we have our small. Just make sure I don't tear my card. And set that aside. So you're going to need some low tack tape to ensure that your die doesn't move because it would be horrible if you'd just done all that work and then the die moved. So I'm just going to get my plates ready and I'm going to do it on the plates. So I have my snap plates. Did anybody get the snap when it was on special offer on Create and Craft with the lithium battery? Great price that was. So <clears throat> let's just figure out which way it needs to go. So I'm going to place. I'm just going to place it this way because it's just easier for me to position it. So I'm just going to place it face down, down over the die. It gives a one millimeter border around your artwork. So please don't worry if it's not perfect. You have got room for error. You know. So I'm just going to hold that in place. And then with the second one, let's get some more tape. So again, place it best you can. As long as you can see the whole image, you're probably guaranteed that the image is going to be okay when you come to cut it out. I'll go with that one. There we go. So I'm just going to run this through the snap. Always remember to do your cutting die face down if, you, if that's how you use them. I did it face up the other day on last studio actually and I actually embossed a card rather than cut a card. So I had to run it through again. So that's just one thing to remember. So I'm just going to move it out of the way. And as you can see there, it's cut beautifully. So let's get pop these out of our... Oh, there we go. So you can see there now how lovely... So you have a one one with a one rose head and then a second one with three. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So I'm just going to show you how to create a little bit of an effect on here so your artwork on your card is not bland. So I'll put I'll pop it on top of just pop a piece of white card up underneath so you can see what I'm going to do. There we go, that's a little bit easier. So, to create some depth within this card, what I wanted to do was I wanted to drop a white highlight in there. And I've just got one of our white reinkers here. I'm just going to pop a little bit of it onto, this, um, onto the top of my Eureka here. N not a lot. It is not to... Um, flood the area or anything like that, it's simply to give myself um, a highlight. So you could do it neat as is, so always practice onto a bit of scratch paper. So this is black, so what I probably do is practice onto the black and as you can see there, <coughs> it dries, it dries to practically nothing. So you don't really need to dilute it, you just need to go for it. And all it's going to do is it's going to create a highlight on the flower and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just picking up some of the white ink and I'm just going to drop it in the rose area and it will dry back okay so we have that rose there so I'm just going to drop a li little bit in the petal the leaves sorry and the 
embossing powder will act as a resist you know if you pop it on top of the lines it will act as a wrist so a resist so don't worry about it I'm just going to pop a little bit of detail within these leaves and when it dries back it will practically dry back to nothing but it will give that highlight so that one I'll just put that to one side and you'll be able to see how that dries in a second <coughs> excuse me so. You could do the whole area if you're not the most confident colourist, but you can just drop it in, go with the lines. Just get a little bit more ink. And if you wanted to take it maybe to the next level, you could drop a bit of colour in there because you've now got the base layer to pop colour on top of. So if you wanted to drop some pink in the rose, you could do that also because you've got the white base layer. Can you see how those have come together, how this is dry backed and this is still here? So I'll just show you quickly, if you do drop a bit of pink in there, what happens? And you have to pick it up neat. There's no point diluting it down because it's onto black. So if you pop a bit of pink within that white area, the white creates like a base, so it's like painting onto black card, it's like magic. I'm just going to do it on the rose heads though, nothing, not on the leaves. Pop a bit more pink in there. And I'm just going to raise that up a little bit to so see if you can see it a little bit. There is pink in there, oh yeah, there we go. There is plenty of pink in there, so I'm just going to clean my station and then let's create a card. <coughs> I'll just see if we can get that pink picked up for you. There we go. You can see the pink and white in there. It's still drying, but it does sit on top of the white. It looks beautiful. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop it on to our, so I have a top folding black note card on this occasion. I'll just pop that to one side and we will put these back on our carrier sheet. Now within this collection as well, you do get the two rose heads as individuals and you do get the coordinating dies. So if you want to build up, um, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to hold that in place and on this set then we have thinking of you. So I'm just going to pop this straight in the centre here. So excuse the head, I just need to make sure it's straight. It's not. There we go. So I'm just going to anti-static the area where that heat emboss sentiment is going to be. Now you could swap out the heat embossing. You could swap gold for silver or a coloured embossing powder. You could swap it for whatever you want. But I am just going to keep this card quite simplistic. So again, as you can see how it picks up all that detail there, it's really lovely. So if you heat emboss and you do get the white powder around, still the excess, all you need to do is just dust it off with a microfiber cloth, a dry baby wipe, they all work. You know, you don't burn the white powder on there, the, the mark does not stay there. So I'm just going to heat set this one. Again, go as hot as you possibly can. Patience is key on this one. and clean and crisp that's what you want and then the powder should just brush off giving you a beautiful look so let's get this card constructed then just move this out of the way so 
<coughs> excuse me so let's just go back to our florals and just see if they're dry still a little bit wet so I'm just going to dry those off with my gun so when you're drying ink within heat embossing always remember that the gun will activate the heat embossing again and you take the risk of it melting and then bleeding so just be mindful of that when you're heating the ink trying to dry your ink and with that in mind I'm going to go from behind to try and um, stop that from happening so that's perfect so we could go top and bottom now you could cut two of these and do a drop shadow between okay but I'm not going to I'm just going to leave it as simplistic as possible so I'm going to go with um, let's see how it looks so maybe this at the top yep I think I'm happy with that one so let's pop some 3d pads behind Oh, excuse me, I'm just going to get a drink, ladies and gents, sorry. <coughs> it's one of those things, it happens to me quite often these days. So I'm just going to pop this, so it's just encroaching over. You know, you can offset, I'm going to trim the ends off anyway, so it's entirely up to you. But I am just going to go for it in the middle. Stick it down. And then the base one. And I'm just going to trim. Now more time at home, you may want to put pads all the way across. But there we go. Card and coordinating envelope. So you could write the dress within the envelope. What a beautiful thing to give to somebody. If that rocks on your mat from your door, you know that isn't a bill. So I hope you like that demonstration. Pretty simple, pretty easy. You could swap it out for colours, swap the embossing powders, do it on white card with coloured inks. It's entirely up to you, but it's a technique that you might want to try. So I'll just put that one to one side and then we're going to move on to the second demonstration. Don't forget to let me know which demonstration you've liked the best because I excuse me I do like to hear what you all think I learn from what you say and it helps me grow as a crafter as well so that's putting that to one side let's move on to the next demonstration so I have a piece of white cardstock here and what I've done ahead of time is if you can see that there I have score sorry I have pencil lined one inch just shy of one inch sorry in on the cardstock so I've created myself a little bit of a grid nothing fancy and it's just in pencil okay and it's only in pencil because I will need to rub it out so <clears throat> let's just move this one out of the way and so next stamp set I'm going to use is this one here which I'm sure a lot of you will already have and it's this one here with the large sentiments on so get your happy on you're a whole lot of lovely yes you are and perfect in every way you also get the splats within there as well so I'm going to be using get your happy on on this stamp set today so I've created myself a little bit of a grid there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some ink you probably have no idea where this is going and um, wondering oh my goodness what is she doing but it will come to fruition so I'm just popping some of the pink reinker onto my glass mat and I'm just getting my brush and I'm just going to create a bit of a colour some co like a colour wash to the centre nothing fancy and you know, you all know as crafters at home how much I love my wet in wet technique well I'm not going to do wet in wet technique today because I want the lines to be quite harsh so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it into the centre here 
and this is normal cardstock. So if I get the lines, I'm happy with it. So So just keep dropping your colour in. And your water. There is no right or wrong way. And I know a lot of you do think to yourself, oh my goodness, what is she doing? That looks like a horrid mess. And then a lot of you say, oh my goodness, it was fantastic. So, you know, I, I love playing. I just absolutely love playing so I'm just going to make that a little bit brighter by intensifying the colour a little bit in the centre maybe not water it down as much there we go So I'm just going to dry that one off. <coughs> Excuse me. So you could go in again on the third time and make it even darker if you wanted to. There is no right or wrong way with this. You've just got to give yourself a chance and see where it takes you. You know, <clears throat> best cards are made from mistakes, remember. Let's try this from behind as well, get it to dry a little bit quicker. So I'm going to put some, what we'll do is we'll be a little bit arty as well, we'll pop some splashes on here as well. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can use your um, Eureka Splatter Brush, which has got the end so you can flick onto your artwork. Um, but just because I've got this ink on here, I am just going to do it with my paintbrush. I'm just going to pick, load my brush and hopefully there is enough ink on there just to get some splashes within my artwork. There is. So I just don't want to waste it. And what I would do as well is I would probably get my brush and put some bigger ones within. Like so. So just clean the top of my Eureka. There we go. And then I'm just going to dry the splats off because there is a difference between splats and smudges. You know, I end up with a lot of smudges these days, so I try and get in the habit of using a good old trusted heat gun. So I'm happy with that one. So what I'm going to do now is I have a ruler and I have a black pen. This pen is the Prism Hunky Dory pen and I'm going to use the bullet nib on this one. I'm just going to create a little bit of a frame. Now, because I'd already drawn the grid within, I'm just going to frame this splash that makes any sense at all and it will come to fruition so I'm just going to pop my ruler on here following the lines I put in within pencil but I'm not going to frame it all I'm just going to go to the ink can you see there turn it round see it 
feel like I'm on TV, I'm shaking, I don't know why. <laughs> there we go, can you see how that has instantly framed the splash? So we have some artwork coming together. Before I do my next thing though, I am going to just dry that off because I'm not sure if the black ink will smudge as soon as I decide to rub out those pencil lines. So I'm, I'm not giving it a chance, should we say. I'm just gonna try and make sure it's super dry. So I have just an eraser, a rubber eraser, and I'm just gonna remove those pencil lines. Should we say they are my makings, so we don't want people to see those. That's it. So you would never know there was a pencil frame within there. And this is why it's imperative that the ink is dry, because as soon as you start doing this, it'll just smudge. you may have pencil they all need erasing including what's within the ink as well so there we have can you see you've got it doesn't matter which way you put it you have like a splash suspended within a frame so let's move on to the next stage then so I'm just going to pop my artwork into my Eureka and I'm going to use the get your happy on So you could use the get the happy on within the centre if you want, oh, it actually fits perfect, or you could just go for it within here like this. What we'll do is we'll go landscape today and I'm just going to pop the happy within there. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this in, in black, black ink. You may have to stamp this a few times to get that lovely true black intensity on there, but it will truly look like it's been brush lettered within your little frame. So if you did a pink one, a yellow one, a green one, a blue one, and put them in a note card, excuse, <coughs> excuse me, um, they'd make a lovely little gift set. So I'm just going to ink it again because I want it to be really black. Right, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to dry it off and then I'm going to show you just something else just to maybe give your artwork another lift. So these are all just tips that you can take away with you and just use on your day-to-day -day crafting. Um, <clears throat> I try and put everything into one card if I can, but um, you've got the time at home to just enjoy it and maybe practice all the techniques. I'm just quickly drying this off. So in my stash I have got these two coloured pens here and they are grey pens and I have a Spectrum Noir and a Copic so an IG4 and a C6 so I'm just going to see how dark these are because I don't want to ruin my artwork by putting a drop shadow on that is too dark because it wouldn't be believable so I just have a piece of card here and I think if I put that one round it will get lost so let's try this one now alcohol does evaporate and dry lighter so I'm going to go with this one <laughs> so what I'm going to do, one second, I'm just going to zoom in for you and show you how to create a drop shadow on this, this sentiment, <laughs> excuse me, to click off.
So what we're going to do is we are going to create a drop shadow and I've got this obviously this pen, it's a brush nib and all we're going to do is we're going to draw a line around the right hand side of all the words, the right hand side. So you would not do one down the left and one down the right, you would always just do it down the right hand side. And brush lettering obviously is thinner strokes are when you go up and your fatter strokes are when you're coming down. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make sure it's dry, my head's not in the way, so I'm just going to create a shadow down the right hand side of that, the right hand side of this. Now you're probably thinking that's really dark, you've got to give it a chance to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to do one down here. So always down the right hand side of your thicker strokes and your thicker strokes are always down. So that will dry back slightly lighter than that and you will get a beautiful effect. So let's get this constructed onto a card. So I have my trusted tape pens. Quite a bit of tape on here, I would hate for it to fall apart on anybody. Swap that one out. And I would also use wet glue just to ensure it isn't going to drop to pieces. And then we will put some pads on the rear of here. Now you could double pad this to give it the three dimension know the dimension that you actually want, whatever height you want. So I know we're coming towards the end, so if you have been watching, thank you very, very much. And if you haven't been watching, you can always catch our videos later over on YouTube. They never go away, they always stay there. the card. I will work in sets of three if you can. Just gonna move that one to here maybe. There we go. So two cards, two different techniques, ideas, call it as you wish. Um, I will post a picture of these at the end of the studio and don't forget, <laughs> excuse me, to like and share if you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to comment on the studio mix because you could be in a chance of winning whatever I've made in the live studio. So I will see you next week hopefully at four o'clock on a Wednesday and we'll have some more hints, tips and techniques for you. So whatever you're doing this, this evening, have a great one. Stay safe, stay cosy, and I'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.